Hey guys, it's Awakening with Allie, back with Allie. So excited for today's show, an incredible guest. She is an incredible woman in the childbirthing space, and I am so pumped for this conversation. I have Karen Welton, who is a doula, childbirth educator, and empowerment coach, and she teaches women how to have an ecstatic, pain-free, empowering birth experience. And having had her own three empowering pain-free births, Karen is extremely passionate about helping other women overcome fear and pain and discover how powerful they really are. As a doula and childbirth educator, she has supported hundreds of women in their childbirth journey. Her e-course, Pain-Free Birth and Postpartum Bliss, teach women how to partner with our bodies and dive into the design to have a pain-free, ecstatic birth and postpartum experience. Her goal is to change the global culture of birth so that women can no longer feel fear in birth and look forward to the joy of birth. And you guys, we are going to get into everything about this. I am so excited to have Karen. Welcome to Awakening with Allie. Thank you so much for having me. Yes, you're so welcome. I have been taking your amazing course just to give my listeners a little uh, backstory of our connection. I've been uh, getting to dive into the pain-free course and it's been amazing. I love how just passionate you are, even in the chorus of how you speak to everything and how tangible uh, it really is. And it's not anything that you're sitting there going like, oh, I don't know if I could do that. Like it really is. You make it so just real. And it's like, Hey, this is totally attainable. If you really want it, it's here for you, uh, which is beautiful. And before we kind of dive into all that, cause I really feel like, you know, this, uh, topic is going to be just all about awakening to a child free birth and what that looks like. Why don't you take us back a little bit of kind of before you had your three beautiful children and how you kind of got to this space of realizing pain-free birth was possible, how you essentially achieved it. And now why you're so passionate about what you shared today. Yeah. So when I got pregnant with my first daughter, she's nine now. So I always go by her age. Um, I was scared of birth. I was scared of the pain of childbirth, just like a lot of women are. And, but there was something in my spirit that just didn't settle. It didn't feel right about this narrative that birth is supposed to be painful. It's supposed to be horrible and traumatizing and you just have to suffer through it. Right. And so I kind of started on this spiritual awakening journey for myself where I began to seek out, is there something more that I'm not being told? Is there some, is there another way to birth? Does it, is it like, you know, supposed to be this way and it's just unavoidable. Right. Um, And it didn't line up with who I believe God to be. Right. So like, I believed he, he was a good father. He was a good father. God that didn't want his kids to suffer. So that was just like my personal belief. It it was incongruent with my own spiritual walk and what I knew about God. And so I just kind of began to get curious and seek out truth and seek out, is this possible? Is this real? Um, One of the earlier books I read was the uh, Supernatural Childbirth. And it was written like 25 years ago by a word of faith woman who talked about her experience with a pain-free birth and other women's stories of a pain-free birth in that book. And it like awakened my faith. It really kind of kicked me off on this journey. Um, But I'm reading this book and I'm realizing, okay, this book is like 25 years old. The babies being born in this book are like my age now or in their twenties. I'm not quite in my twenties anymore, but I thought, okay, God, I kind of like put this prayer out there to the universe, to God. And I said, I need to see that. I need to know that this is real today. Like you were just saying in the intro, like, is this real? Like, let's make this real for us. Can we apply this to our lives? Can this, is this really something that's tangible that I could experience? Um, so within like a few months of praying that I'm pregnant, I need a friend in California who said, oh, I had a pain-free birth with my second child. So I was like, tell me all about it. I want to know all the details. How'd you do it? You know, give me the information. So that was like the proof of concept, right? Like, okay, this is possible. This is not just like a theory in my head. It's not just like, you know, a fancy spiritual mantra. This is like real. I, I, I'm staring at my friend who I know who I can give her credibility. Like she's not lying to me. Like she actually experienced this. So once I sort of believed it for myself. It was really this faith journey of like grasping that this is really real. This is possible. I can do this. And then everything else around me just felt 
incongruent to that truth. All the fear, all the concern, all the naysayers, you know, all the culture of birth. I'm, I felt like I was walking through it in this tunnel and it's all around. Like if you're pregnant, you know, Allie, like if any pregnant woman who has w- w- given birth or is pregnant, you know, and you can feel the culture of fear surrounding childbirth. And I could just feel that all around me, but it was like, it just like fell off me. It was like, like I had Vaseline all over me and it just like slid off. And I just, my heart didn't accept any of that anymore. It was like, I was being awakened to this higher spiritual truth that this was not my portion. This was not like written in stone that I had to have this painful experience. And then I began to dive into books and materials like from Ina Mae Gaskin about how the physiology of our body works and how it's actually divine to birth, divinely created and designed to birth without pain, how the sphincter law works, how the, the uterus opens and expands and contracts and everything our body does to accommodate this process of bringing forth new life and, and birthing children. And I began to get obsessed. I began to just get so fascinated with the, this process of childbirth and it got me so excited. So by the time I remember like sitting in Tim Hortons with my doulas, like in my third trimester and they were like, so how do you feel about, you know, your upcoming birth? Cause they know I'm a first time mom. I've never done this before. Usually there's a lot of anxiety, right? Surrounding birth for, for first time moms, especially. And one of the, the doulas was a new doula and she, they asked me this question, how do you feel? You know, are you, do you have any concerns? And I was like, no, I'm, I'm good. I just, I just feel like I, my body knows what to do. And I just remember she was like shocked by that. She, she was not just like shocked, but she was like, oh, that's awesome. Like, I love that. And that's, you know, they see birth all the time. They know women have this capability, but they also see women doubt themselves so much and fall into this trap of fear and anxiety and pain. And when I didn't have any of that, it was like, Oh, that's so, it was like, she took a deep breath. I'm like, oh my goodness. So fast forward to my birth. I'm not sure how much I should go into detail here, but um, we'll just go right into it. <laughs> like, go for it. Um, so I remember just feeling by the end of my pregnancy, so excited and just so confident in my body. And I kind of said like, I don't necessarily know what to do because I've never done this, but I trust that my body knows what to do. And I had learned enough to give me enough faith, enough excitement to like, be able to trust in this, this divine process that like, it's been set up before time before, you know, my body was created, like there's that DNA, there's a code in me that my body knows what to do, even though it's never done it. It has generations of women before me have been doing it and it will do what it's called. It's supposed to do. So I get to birth. I'm a week overdue. I remember having contractions in the middle of the night. My uterus is like contracting, pulling up, expanding. You're, you're feeling that tension, that stretching, but it was painful. And I'm like thinking, wait a minute, this isn't what I prepared for. This isn't what I believe. This isn't, this is not, I was like, I had a little conversation with God, like a little come to Jesus moment. Like, okay, this isn't what we agreed on. <laughs> like, that's just like my relationship with, with God. That's just me. I'm just like, hey, let's talk. This isn't what we talked about. <laughs> and so I basically said, hey, what do I need to do? Like, this isn't working because it was painful. And I'm thinking, okay, this is early labor, like early, early labor. If it's like this now, what is it going to be like when I'm nine centimeters or in transition? So I just kind of tuned into my spirit and in my spirit, I heard very clearly embrace it. And I'm thinking, but I don't want to embrace my like reaction gut instinct is like, but I don't want to, it hurts. You know, we're not taught instinctually to embrace what hurts us. We're taught to run away. Right. So it was counterintuitive, but I'm like, okay, I'm not going to argue if this is God, I'm just going to try it. (laughs) And so the next contraction came, I felt it swell in my body and it expanded. And as it did, I wanted to brace for it and resist it. But instead I welcomed it in and I I literally like molecularly energetically embraced that surge of energy in my body. And it got bigger and bigger and bigger, but it didn't hurt. And it took all my mental like willpower and energy to like consciously relax every muscle in my body to embrace it and not fight against it and as I did that the first time I'm like hmm that didn't hurt let's try that again so the next one comes you know 10 minutes later and that one didn't hurt and the next one didn't hurt and I'm like okay I can do this so like all night long I'm just like practicing this like muscle reflex of embracing every contraction as it comes and it took like some serious mental energy 
because it went against my natural instinct to fight against it, right? Um, so it was, it, but by the time it was like morning and throughout the day, I remember being like, no, I got this. It, it became muscle memory and I didn't have to think about it or concentrate on it so much. Um, so, so like fast forward to the end of the birth, uh, I was, my doulas were there. I have, I tend to have long labors. So I kind of labored through that night and that day. And then by after, by like, I would say mid afternoon, I was like having so feeling so excited because in my head, I kept thinking this is going to get worse. Like, okay, Karen, don't get too excited. Right. Because this is still early labor. You don't know how bad it's going to get. There's always like that doubt in the back of your head. And, and I kind of went into this with like, you know, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe it, it doesn't work. Who knows? So in the back of my head, I kept thinking like, you know, don't get too excited yet. It could still get worse. And then it, in like mid afternoon, I get checked. I'm like seven or eight centimeters and it still doesn't hurt. And I realize it's working. This is not just in my head. This is working. I'm not in pain. And I get this surge of oxytocin and endorphins through my body. And I'm so happy. I remember like on my, I was on my hands and knees in the living room. It was a home birth. My doula was like massaging me or hip squeeze or something. My husband and the other doula midwives were in the kitchen. They were just like chit-chatting, like literally just chit-chatting like Sunday afternoon, hang out, have some coffee. And I'm in there like freaking in transition, like laughing. They have no idea what's happening with me and my <laughs> the doula. And I remember thinking in my head, I'm having fun. But I'm like, no, 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 that's too, that nobody has fun in labor. Like you're not supposed to have fun. This is hard work. And I have this little argument with myself in my head, like, you, you better, you should say this out loud. Like I just felt like I needed to say it out loud. Otherwise I wouldn't believe it later. But I thought I was too embarrassed because I thought my, what is my doula is going to think of me? So eventually after a few minutes of arguing this internal dialogue, I just blurted out, I'm having fun. <laughs> and I got even more joy, even more like surges of this, these endorphins, what I know now is endorphins. I didn't really get it then. Um, and then after that, get in the tub, we, she, I pushed her out. She, it took about 40 minutes or so of pushing. That part was hard. Not going to lie. Didn't really understand how to push without pain in the first birth. So, uh, but it was still, I just learned to like, let my body do the hard work. I didn't force it. And that really helped me. Um, she came out and we had, she came out in the water and just the joy, the love, the excitement I felt um, just having her in my arms at first, it was like relief. Like, I can't believe I just did that. Right. Like it is hard work. It's not, it is no walk in the park. So the first is just relief. Like, I'm so glad that part's over. Cause it was so those surges at the end were so intense. It just, your whole body takes over and you can't fight it. It's like, it starts bearing down. And I knew like, at one point, if I try to control this at all, I'm uh, it's over. Like it's going to hurt. I have to, I had to totally surrender. And there was this point, and I believe there's this point in everyone's labor where we, it demands that we surrender completely. Like we surrender to our fears. We surrender to control. We surrender to trusting our body. Um, and I got to that point and I just said, okay, body, you're the driver. I'm the passenger. You take over. And it did. It went like, so I didn't know I had that much power in, in me. <laughs> and so what that did for me as like, a new mom was it convinced me, wow, I'm way more powerful than I thought. If I just did that, if I just pushed a baby out of my body, I can do this motherhood thing. Like I, I, I can do it. It gave me so much confidence um, to start off that journey. And it was still, even though it was so hard and motherhood and postpartum was hard, it just awakened something in me that empowered me, like kicked me up a whole notch. It was like this spiritual upgrade that I didn't know I needed. <laughs> And it convinced me to me, like, it was like, you can do this. You can do harder things than you thought you could. <laughs> and so that was really my first experience of birth that got me into wanting to now realizing, okay, it really is this, it really can be amazing and uh, empowering. And, and I got this fire inside of me after her birth, where I said, women are being lied to. Like we're being taught, this is scary. This is painful. You have to suffer. You're going to have all these horrible things happen to you, all these stories. And it gets in us and we go bring it, all of that baggage into our birth. And of course, a lot of those things manifest and happen, right? So I remember feeling like this has to, women have to know the truth. Like they just need to know this is available. Obviously I know like not every woman 
experiences pain-free birth or birth without complications and birth, you know, is never something we can control or plan. And there's a lot of things that are out of our control, but I just felt like women deserve to know that this is an option, that this is possible. And you don't have to accept the narrative that this is your body's broken. It doesn't know what to do. Your hips are too small. You're too old. You're too fat. You're all of these things we're told in our culture that disqualifies us. Like before we even get into the room, like, oh, you're something's going to go bad. Like it's going to hurt so much. You better get the epidural. Don't try to be a hero. There's so many of these mantras, these sayings that, that unfortunately <laughs> get in our spirits. And then we hear the stories and we, our doctors tell us all of that, you know, we're going to need an induction. We're going to have to do this and that, and this doubt, this fear. Um, so I became a doula to help other women experience an empowering birth, whatever that meant for them. Right. I know my experience is not theirs, but everyone has this, their own experience, but I wanted to help support women to having birth be a transformational empowering experience. And I decided to write a book about it. And then that book became an e-course. So I created the pain free birth e-course. Meanwhile, I had two other babies. So I have three girls now, all home births, born at home, um, most of it pain-free and learning more and more each time I went, like each birth story was different with my second birth. It was like a party. It was, we, I labored all night long, actually through two nights. <laughs> and we had doulas, I had midwives, I had friends and we literally ate and laughed and joked. And like, she came out like in laughter and joy. And that was my hardest labor physically. She was asynclitic and probably would have ended in a cesarean if I was in a hospital, just because of how long it was taking and how she was really kind of getting stuck in there and had to do a lot of maneuvers and techniques to get her out. But, and that pushing phase was so even more <laughs> intense than my first. So, but it proved to me then, oh, if you don't need a perfect like setup, you, you don't have to have a baby in a perfect position and the perfect, you know, everything in order to have um, a, a pain-free birth. Just the joy that was there, like all those endorphins and oxytocin, you know, canceled out the pain. So it was really cool. I loved, I loved that to know that like, hey, this is possible, not just for the perfect situations, right? And then the third one, that's a whole nother story. I won't get into it. Just there's so much intimacy and peace in that one. Um, I was going through a traumatic season in my life personally. And even with the emotional turmoil, God brought me so much peace in that birth. And that, that was probably one of my, the most beautiful, like um, intimate experiences was, was bringing that my third into the world. But um, I began to support other women, to coach other women. And then when I started seeing them also having pain-free births and they, my clients would come back to me and say like, yeah, I was laughing at like nine centimeters or, and the nurses and midwives didn't believe I was in labor and they tried to send me home and all these stories. And I'm just like, it's not just me. Like, I'm not the fluke. Like this is possible for every woman. It just takes like a shifting of our mindset and how we view birth. And I just got so excited. Like there were so many proof of concepts along the way. And every time I worked with a new woman, I would learn more things. I'd learn how, how can we surrender in this space? How can we trust? How, what is God showing you? What is your body teaching you? Like there was just so much gold that came out of it. Um, and then through those uh, working with women and the research I did, becoming a childbirth educator and then creating the e-course. Um, and now I get, now I get testimonies every, almost every day of, of women having empowering, positive, pain-free birth, you know, all the whole spectrum. They're not all hundred percent pain-free. They don't have to be. Um, that's not the goal, but there are so many women that come back to me that say, I, I didn't have pain until like the very last push. I just had one client say she gave birth to her baby, her second baby. The first was traumatic. It was a home birth. She had zero pain until like the very last push. And it was an 11 pound baby. I was like, you are a rock star. Like what women are capable of so much more than we're taught to believe. <laughs> so like every day I do this work, um, I, my, God just expands what I even, what I even know to be possible. So it's such a privilege to do it. And, and I love sharing with the world how blissful and good birth really can be. <laughs>
Yeah, that's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing so much of your story. And you know what I loved listening to you over and over besides your passion was how much you spoke to you before you even said the word surrender. And then you did end up saying surrender, but you spoke to that surrender. You spoke to in your own births, as well as other people that you've experienced, you know, with client wise, like how there is this moment where we are asked to surrender and we are asked to essentially have faith over fear. And we're not taught that, right? Like we're, we're completely taught the opposite and programmed, like you said, to, to be in fear, to, you know, think about all the interventions that are coming that, you know, this is impossible. The list goes on. And what I love so much about your story, Karen, was I was relating so hard because you know, I had a traumatic birth with my first daughter and, you know, I didn't know anything as a first time, you know, new mom. And I had so many opinions and everything else around me. And I, you're right. It gets absorbed in your spirit. And I was not uh, strong enough at the time to just kind of have those boundaries and say, you know, no, I have to be, you know, in my space. And I've learned, you know, from that experience, but I had a, you know, traumatic birth after being you know, 42 hours and, you know, not progressing to where it needed to be. And my daughter, Amelia, getting stuck, you know, twice and everything. And so winding up in a C-section and it was so traumatic on so many levels because there was just so much intervention and so much heartache and so much opinions and drama and the list goes on. And so fast forward to my daughter, Arlie's birth, you know, I had my VBAC, you know, and for those that don't know, vaginal birth, vaginal birth after a C-section, you know, VBAC. And when you speak about that surrender, I had that moment too of like, when I was getting to, you know, I, I, my body was progressing way better, way faster. I was listening. I was tuning in, you know, I, I was at home at first and then went to the hospital. And so when I was in the tub, I was really tuned in and just like allowing the surges, like you were saying, and just letting them flow, staying in my zone. And I can completely relate to that because I remember sitting in the tub and knowing that this was happening, this was coming. And I called my doula and my doula is on the phone with me. And she's like, all right, I'm just going to like count, you know, like your contractions, see where we're at. And I was still like 11 or 12 minutes apart. So she's like, we've got some time. So just like relax and, you know, get in your zone. And, you know, my husband's sleeping and my, you know, my little one Amelia is, you know, two and she's sleeping in her crib. So I'm just like in my zone, you know, in the middle of the night, like by myself in the tub. And I'm just laboring and I'm, you know, in my space and I'm doing a little bit of like hypnobirthing and the whole thing. And all of a sudden I hear her yelling in my, you know, AirPods. She's like, oh, oh, almost six minutes apart. Time to go. <laughs> you, know, <it's> like, <laughs> you know, and I was like, wait, what? You know, and it was like kind of like coming out of it, you know, and I don't think she even like realized, you know, and, and I was like, oh, and then I like realized, you know, it was a little bit later, you know, in the, the morning and everybody's still sleeping and she's like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm coming over, and, you know, and so anyways, it was, it was so magical even in that sense, because I had no idea even through that, that there was going to be really no pain. And I was going to be in my own space. And then it wasn't until I had to get into the truck and like, it was literally in transition that I started like, you know, really feeling it. And I couldn't like necessarily track my mindset as strong, you know, being the truck driving the hospital and all the things. And then of course, you know, COVID and all the nonsense that was going on, like they're trying to mask me, they've got bright lights. I know it was a whole, a whole situation you know, and so that like definitely threw me for a loop, but then I was able to come back into my space, thank God, and really like get into that, like meditative space you spoke of and be like, okay, I can do this. Like I can get back in this. And I was able to kind of, you know, move through at the hospital and my husband, you know, set up my space, my dual is, you know, on FaceTime, she was allowed in and, you know, all the things. And, and at the end of, you know, what coming to the end of that birth, you know, basically Arlie had a moment where she kind of got stuck at the last station and I can like, just hear them all kind of, you know, whispering and, you know, different things going on. There's like, you know, and my dual is just looking at me on the phone and she's like, you've got this, you can do this. Mm -hmm. Like you, you can power through, you're okay. You know, and my husband's like, you know, you've got this. And so I looked at him and I'm like, give me my, you know, give me my air button. I put on one of my like fear releasing meditations and I go in, back into my space and I start really speaking to God and really meditating and doing breath work and just like getting in my zone. And before I know it, you know, they're like push and I push and there she is. And it was the most like healing, miraculous, oh. empowering, like just beautiful, like truly come to God, surrender moment. Like, you know, and so when you were speaking about that, I was getting chills because I'm like, I can relate so much to that moment. And then also afterwards feeling so empowered and like, so badass almost that you're like, wow, 
I can do this. Like, and then I can freaking do anything, you know, like it's so true, you know, and that was what I went through. It was like, I said, my husband described it the best. He was like, it was like watching you with our first daughter and being in postpartum depression, which I was to postpartum euphoria. He's like, there was just a switch that went off with you. And he was like, and it was amazing to watch it. And I was like, and I, and I felt that in my spirit. So when you were speaking of that, I'm like, yes, I just love that. You're so passionate about like teaching women, like this is truly possible for you. You really can do this. It is a mindset work. It is a surrender. It is a faith over fear, but if you can get to that space and trust and allow yourself and trust in your body, like you said, that is literally made to do this then it changes everything. And so now obviously maybe being, you know, my third trimester and pregnant, you know, with my, you know, third baby, like being able to take your course and like, see how passionate you are, how much you speak to, you know, how possible this is and the simple things that you can do. It's just so empowering because it just further even helps me like be reminded from what I felt in that second birth to like, oh yeah. And there can be even more magic in this birth. Like I can allow (laughs) even more in and more in my spirit and more connection and more surrender, you know? And I just think it's so important to not only talk about obviously like how real this is, but also the piece of what you said of that surrender and that true practice of like being in that space, instead of allowing people to tell you stories and take those stories with you and create your own trauma and essentially let it manifest. And I just really love that you kept speaking to that it awakened something in you. And it really took you on a new spiritual journey of like, wow, this is so much more than just a pain-free birth. Like this is literally like next level, like you said, of your own spiritual upgrade, which I thought was so cool. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. It just, yeah, like I said, it proves something proved me to me. And I think every woman deserves to have that opportunity to have that like, and even, you know, women who who might prepare for a a natural birth or pain free birth or physiological birth, whatever you, you know, your goals are there. um, Even when those things don't happen, and maybe it's painful, maybe you had to get transferred to the hospital, maybe you needed interventions. I think the women who learn to step into their power in this pregnancy and and birth process, it's not so much about the outcome and like what exact what the, what happened, but it's really more about like you're trusting yourself, you're trusting your body, and you're making your own powerful choices and decisions instead of letting other people make those choices for you or dictating or really giving your power away. And I see that happen so often in this space is that usually through fear, usually through coercion, usually through some, you know, manipulation or just piling on doubt, you know, and it stacks. And when that doubt stacks to a certain peak, women kind of cave and they give their power away. Okay, fine. I'll, whatever that might mean, maybe that's fine. I'm getting an induction, even though there's nothing wrong with baby, or I'm getting, you know, I'm, I'm going to not to have the birth I really want at a birth center or a home birth or wherever, or with the provider, I'm too scared to switch providers. I don't want to offend them. Like there's so much we do that we're like, okay, I'm, I don't want to offend. I, I want to keep the peace. And we have to break that mentality of like being the people pleaser, because this, your, this experience of birth is not just about you. It's about your baby. It's about your whole postpartum this big, this journey of motherhood. And like you shared, like the birth experience you have impacts the postpartum experience you have so much. And it's so it's not just about the birth. It's like it ripple effects throughout your whole life. Your mental health affects the baby's health, affects your family's health, affects like your whole world. Um, and I just love seeing women grab a hold of this and and just step into their power in a way where they say, no, like I'm I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna like experience this and and it takes like a courage it takes a surrender like like you said and it takes like this courage to walk through the fire knowing like this isn't going to be easy this isn't like there's nothing in birth that's guaranteed right but when you take this on and you make a decision to to bet on yourself to bet on your body despite what all the naysayers say despite what any you know what doctors may have told you about your body limitations or whatever um when you bet on yourself there you get this courage and i believe all of heaven is for you i believe that like heaven and the spiritual realm is working for you to like propel you forward because all the energy all the strength is there inside you you just have to believe it you just have to agree with it and go okay let's do this i i'm gonna 
I'm going to believe in this <laughs> and go for it. Um, and it really, it really is a spiritual awakening. Um, and it can be for, for so many women. Yeah. I love that. I love that You said that, you know, like not only the spiritual awakening, but like really like trusting that like God and the universe and everything around you has your back. It really is there for you if you're willing to step into it. And I also love that you spoke to giving your power away. I think that's such an important topic. And I absolutely did that in my first birth. I had no idea I did that, but I completely did how you spoke to the people pleasing, how, you know, you spoke to the, just keep the peace, just, just want to keep things moving. And you're right. It, and I realized that, like, I had to own that heavily when I went through yeah. my postpartum depression and like went through my own spiritual awakening. I had to own heavily that like, even though I could blame and be in victim mode, right. For all the people around me, I chose to give my power away. I chose. And so I had to yeah. own that. I had to, you know, really step into that. And that was <laughs> not easy to own, but you know, the beauty of it, like you said, of like coming out of that and realizing like, okay, I get to step back into my power. I get yeah. to take that back and be courageous and trust in myself and trust in my body and trust in God, you know, and, and I, I love that you said, you know, like that idea of like, just knowing how powerful you are, because there's so many women, you're right. that are just fed bullshit. Really. That is just like, you know, totally. your body can't do this. The baby's to this, this is, you know, and, and I kind of went through that. I felt like I was being, I don't want to say tested, but like getting lessons while I was kind of at the end of my pregnancy, because my doctor was very VBAC supportive. And at the end, because Arlie was like taking her, you know, sweet time getting closer to 42 weeks. He's like, all right, yeah, you had a C-second like, eh. and I was like, mm -mm. like we said, you know, we were going to do, you know, and he's like, okay. And then it was like the following week. It was like, you know, well, let me, you know, um, you know, uh, whatchamacallit, um, scrape your membranes. And I'm like, no, you know, and it was like, like every week was like a test, you know, and it was like, and then it was like, you know, one time I did let him the following week, he didn't do anything. And so that was like a check for me of like, mm, I knew I shouldn't have done it. And it didn't do anything. If anything, it just made me uncomfortable. Like no more saying like, yes to something just because like, he's pushing me, you know? Mm -hmm. And it was so interesting for me. We had this, like, we had a great relationship. We had this kind of like, you know, fighting fire because he's obviously an expert in his space and feels like he knows. And then I really felt so empowered enough to be an expert in my space and know my body and know where I was. And I was like, look, if she's fine, fluids are fine. We're doing NSTs every other day and everything is good. Like what's the problem, you know? And, and I had to really keep like keeping on that and keep fighting him on that because he was like, you know, then he scheduled me for an induction. I didn't show up, you know, and then he, <laughs> and it was it. Really <laughs> women don't even know you, you can do that. I told well, him like, just tell him you can schedule it. I might not show up. I love that, that you did that. <laughs> <laughs> what can I tell you, I have to be really, I have to be really honest and vulnerable here. I, when it happened, I was so upset and I was so, I felt, I was so mad that he scheduled it. And I was just like, whatever, I'm not, you know, and, and we had a whole thing in the office and I, I call my doula and I'm like, Stacy, I'm so upset. Da, da. And she's like, Allie, it's your choice. Like he can schedule it, but you, you can choose not to show up. And I was nice. like, what? I was like, what? And I remember this is how I'm so dorky, but it's so <laughs> trapped to share it. Cause I know you'll get it. I like waited to like late that, like, cause I didn't have to go in until like, the next morning. I like waited to like late that night to like, I knew <laughs> gone from the office to like call and cancel and I felt like a giddy little schoolgirl like calling like <laughs> to like cut class you know what I mean it was like oh I'm not gonna be showing up you know tonight just you know let them know and they were like okay thanks for calling you know and I hung up and I remember my heart was like yeah. racing out of my chest like oh my god did I you know just do that and I you know went to my husband and I was like oh, I canceled it he's like okay how do you feel and I was like I feel good. He's like, okay, good. You know, and I was like in like panic mode. I'm like running around the house. You know, like, and he's like, oh my God, you know, and I'm like, you know, give me half a glass of wine. And I was like, <laughs> I was like in freak out, you know, and it was just so funny. And my dealer was like, I'm proud of you. Like you took your power back. You decided that it wasn't right for you, you know? And then he called the next morning. He's like, Hey, I'm like, hi. He's like, you didn't show up. I'm like, no. And he's like, so we're going to just do this. And I'm like, I told you where I was at. I was like, it was easier obviously to stay on the phone. I was like, I told you where I was at. We talked about it in person. I was like, I will come back in tomorrow for another NST and we will just keep going. And he was like, okay, but like, I'm going to tell you like by 42, I'm going to be like all over you. And I was like, fine that can be our marker. And I'm okay with that with you. I was like, but right now I've got a few more days and I want to just allow my body. And he was like, okay, fine. See you tomorrow for your next NST. And everything was great with the test, you know? And, and sure enough, Arlie, like literally like came like the night before it was like 42 weeks. Like I like wow. gave birth the 42 <laughs> weeks, you know, it was is, like, <laughs> that is so mentally hard to go overdue like that. And, and it's not because like, 
necessarily like yes pregnancy is hard but i think so much more of it is like the pressure we're getting that women get from the medical providers from our fr family and friends to oh you you have it when are they scheduling your induction you're you, when's the baby coming no baby yet and it's like that anxiety is so strong it's so hard to let go and surrender in a place where you're trying to control it and get that baby to come. <laughs> and so I, I feel like I, and I've witnessed this time and again, and I know even with my own births, this is true that like the, oh, the anxiety itself of going into labor is enough to signal your body. It's not safe yet because our bodies are so wise and they are there. They are designed to detect when there is danger in the environment around us. And they know, they know, oh, there's anxiety, there's adrenaline in your body. Mm -mm. We're, we're just gonna hold off baby is safer inside. We're just gonna wait it out another day or two. Oh, still anxiety? No, we're just gonna hang out. And I feel like we do this to ourselves a lot of times. I mean, I know there's lots of reasons we go overdue. There's fetal positioning, there's, there could be, your due date could be off. I mean, there's so much, but I feel like very often the body knows it's so wise and it detects like, oh, you're stressed out. And it doesn't know whether you're stressed out because there's like a predator in the wild that's going to eat you or because your doctor is saying, hey, you need to get an induction by 42 weeks. And they we have a deadline as if it's like an expiration for our pregnancy. And our bodies don't understand that. The body doesn't have an expiration date. The placenta doesn't just die like boom, as soon as you hit 41 or 42 weeks. It doesn't work that way. Nothing else in our biology is designed that way. It is it is so much different. It's a physiological process. And so it just cracks me up because I can see this in women so often that like we stress ourselves out and we buy into this whole fear and this whole like, oh, you haven't given birth yet. You got it. You got to induce. You got to get the sweep, get this, do the walk a, mi a mile, you know, <laughs> have sex, do all the things. And sometimes it's like after you've exhausted all the things and you're just like, okay, I can't do it. I, cry you know come to jesus like <laughs> let us surrender we get to that point finally where we're like okay i can't make this happen on my own and we surrender and then baby comes and for me there was always a stressor in my life and i knew until that passed baby's not coming and by the third i just knew like i know i'm not going to go into labor before this stressful this event or this situation in my life is resolved i like i didn't even have a doubt and sure enough within like 24 hours boom, it happened. Like, in fact, with my third, the, the, the stressful thing resolved in my life. And I was like six days overdue by that point. But I already knew it's, I'm not going into labor before this, this event happened on a certain weekend. It was over that Sunday night, I heard my body say to me, is it safe to go into labor now? And I was like, <sighs> it was like asking me for permission, which I thought was like the most beautiful thing. So I said, okay, body, can you just give me like one good night of sleep? Cause I hadn't been sleeping well due to this stressful thing happening. <laughs> and so I like asked, Hey, can you give me like one night? And that, that night is when I went, it didn't fully honor my request, but it did ask permission. <laughs> she, she asked permission. Um, and I just thought it was so beautiful how it was like those hormones dipped the body's wisdom comes up and says, Hey, it's like, she was signaling to me, like, it's time. Are you ready? Is it okay? Is it safe now? And then that night I started contracting. It was so, um, there's just so much that's this spirit, the spirituality, this physiological side of birth is, is outside this medical mindset. And if you're so engrossed in the medical, in the numbers, in the dates, in the due dates, in the procedures, in the tests, you're going to miss the spirituality, the transformation that's happening inside you and around you. Yeah, that's amazing. It's so true. And I, I, I love too that, you know, you're like, you're, you know, you felt like essentially your higher self, like God speaking within you and being like, is it time yet? Like, like, let's connect with his soul. Like, is this happening? Yeah. You know, it was like this ushering in like, like uh -huh. an invitation. And I remember like that night I actually hung, like I cleaned up the bedroom where, where, where the birth tub was going to be. I decluttered, got rid of all the clutter on like, you know, all the surfaces and I hung twinkly lights. And that for me was like the sign, like, okay, I'm being ushered into this sacred place. And it was, it was so beautiful. I just remember that night and like putting on worship music, putting like hanging the lights. And it was like, I was stepping into this encounter and my body was, my intuition was just like leading me into it. Um, 
yeah, it was, it was really powerful. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I, I love that. And I, I could feel the power behind that. And also like, I could relate to one of my really spiritual friends said to me when I was like at the end with Arlie and everything was going on, I was getting super frustrated. Like you're saying, like everyone around you is like, oh my gosh, why haven't you gone here? What's going on? Isn't that your due date? And it's like, oh, it's not really a due date and all these things. And I'm like trying not to absorb everything, really not bring in my spirit, like really owning and stepping into my power and just like, not answering my phone, decompressing on <laughs> social media, like, you know, all the things, you know, and I'm like, no, 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 everybody, everybody let me be, you know, and it was, and it was interesting because one of my really good friends, very spiritual turned to me and was like, Hey, just so you know, like you're the one that's holding her back. And I was like, what do you mean? Ooh, and I kind of got yeah. triggered by it. And I was like, what do you mean? And she's like, you're the one that's holding her back. Like she's been ready. It's you. Yeah. And so when you were speaking to like, yeah. those stressful situations and those triggers and those activations. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> well, you know, it was yeah. like, it was so crazy for me. And once I realized that and I had more of the surrender, I was like, oh, okay. This makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And once you get past the trigger and the offense, you get to take back your power and go, oh, so if I'm holding her back, that means I also have the power to allow her to come. I also have the power to come into connection with this living spirit human inside me and have a little conversation right like have a little you know bonding experience in the womb I, I I actually work with clients often to like reconnect and bond with their babies even in the womb and it's amazing what happens some women will, women will actually hear their babies speak to them and then they had no idea like oh I didn't even know I could like connect to my baby like it, it it's like it's this foreign alien substance that's not real until they're born. And then they realize, oh, baby's feeling this way. Baby needs this from me. Baby's anxious. Baby's happy. Like they have emotions, they have feelings, they have like desires and, and you're connected to them, not just like by blood, by oxygen, by nutrients, like you're, they're inside you, but also by spirit. Um, I had one woman tell me like they, she had a really stressful uh, pregnancy, they moved, they had no furniture, they relocated, they had two of their kids, like all job changes. And she never really even acknowledged or bonded with that baby in the pregnancy. And I remember like, I let her in this sort of activation where she laid her hand on her belly and began speaking to the baby. And I actually have this activation in my e-course where I lead women into reconnecting and bonding with the baby, um, which, which I love. And I know like, it's just not something we talk about. Right. So, and she, so she, apologize to her baby for not not bond, for not talking for not bonding for like ignoring basically essentially like neglecting the baby and it was so powerful for her to like move past that like to realize first of all oh this is what I've done not get stuck in the shame spiral but then but then actually take the ownership and power back to address to like repent to her baby it was so powerful and then she said baby what do you need from me and she heard the baby say mommy I need you it was like, we're all just like crying. And, and then the husband, like he prayed over the baby in the womb. And it was just like, she had this like realization of like, oh my gosh, my baby needs me. He, he needs like my heart. He needs my connection. Um, and it, and even in the labor, like there was more of that happening. Um, when she stalled, there was like more uh, spiritual declarations. And I mean, I share her story on my website. If you look it up, it's Rachel's birth story. But I just love those stories because there is such a connection to that. Like we, we really can, we have so much, our minds, our spirits have so much um, power in this process. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. That's incredible. And wow. Such a powerful story. And I, you know, I just love that you bring it back so much to the spirit because it's so true, right? Cause the mind and the ego essentially loves to trick us and tell us, you know, it has to be fearful. It's going to be painful. It has to be this, all these things with these programs, these stories, these attachments that aren't ours that society has created for us. And you're right. It's like when you really tap into your spirit and you allow yourself to just hear your baby and like hear your soul and tap into your higher self and ask God, it's like, it all becomes so much more clear yeah. and birth is like just such another huge, you know, I feel like to me, like, you know, being pregnant, you know, right now I'm like, I feel oh, like, you know, it. I'm like, you know, this little portal, you know, it's like this portal of yes. life, you know, and, and it's like true spiritual connection. And I just love that you just speak so much to like that divine realm and how much like women really are supported and held and empowered. And, and I just think it's so important because obviously especially nowadays we're being fed fear 24 seven and there's just so much going on. And it's like, 
when you can step out of that and you can really be in a faith-based place and you can just trust in yourself and trust in your body and, and trust and listen to your spirit, everything shifts. And that's what I experienced too with Arlie. And so I'm like, so even more like excited for this birth because I'm like, okay, I feel like I have even more tools. I'm taking your course. I'm doing the Christian hypnobirthing. Like I'm doing all of these things to like even further support myself to further step into my power to be like, oh. yeah, okay, I can do this. Like, even like if things, you know, don't go exactly the same, like I can still, I can still do this, you know? And so it's just, it's, it's really, really cool to get to hear you speak so much about, you know, empowerment, your own birth, you know, and, and obviously taking your course, you know, of course, women can go and get your course. And I will link that guys, by the way, I believe my code is Ali 10 capital ALI 10, but I will put it in the show notes with the link. But Karen, I mean, before we wrap things up, like, you know, obviously people should go and take your course and check out all their stuff and follow you on social to get empowered and get essentially aware if they are pregnant or going to be pregnant soon or currently pregnant. But what would you say, like, as far as starting this journey, right? If there's moms listening right now or someone who's about to get pregnant or, you know, whatever it may be, and they're coming into this space and they're like, well, I don't want to be fearful, but I am. And, you know, I already have essentially all this stuff in my spirit from everyone else around me. Where do they start? Like, how do you just start to kind of deprogram from the fear and the noise and the lack of having your power? And, you know, we kind of like finish it up from there. Yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think the best place to start is honestly getting real with your own fears, getting super honest with yourself about what are those fears? Where did they come from? Who did they come from? Where did you pick those things up? And I actually, the very first class of my e-course, the pain-free birth e-course is doing just that with each, each person because we all come into birth with fears. So like when I sat down and I'm facing the fact that I'm pregnant, I have this baby growing inside me in nine months, I'm going to have to push her out. Like that something's going to happen and I can't avoid that. Like one way or the other, this baby is coming out and I'm kind of scared. Like, why am I scared? Okay. Well, my mom had a really, really hard, painful labor with me. In fact, she told me a lot growing up, like, oh, you were posterior. Oh, all these things happened. So my fear was I'm going to have a posterior baby. And then I saw, you know, a movie that showed this depiction of a really scary birth. And then my friend, you know, two years before me being pregnant, had her baby, one of my first friends in my friend circle to have a baby. And it was excruciatingly painful in her words. Right. And then she caught herself. Oh, I don't, I'm sorry. I don't want to, you know, speak those things. And, and I'm like, Oh no, no, I'm fine. But then it stuck, right? Like there are certain stories, there are certain things that you are exposed to usually your first exposures to birth or your mother's experience or certain friends in your circle or movies that made an impact right that actually created the foundation for how we view childbirth it's not a hundred things i mean it feels like that it feels like a mountain it feels like it's everywhere it's overwhelming i i need to avoid it it's too scary but when you really get real and honest with yourself and you go where did i come up with the view of birth that i currently have what am i afraid of and where did that come from um, and I have this all like, you know, we have a whole workbook exercise in, in the class that helps walk you through this. But when you do that, your giant fear of birth that feels and looks like a mountain suddenly becomes a rock that you can pick up and like dismiss. And you can go, oh, that's their story. We can acknowledge it. We can honor it. And then we can say, that's not my story. And we can dismiss it. And then once you can identify those where your fears come from, then you need to fill, it's called like, what's in your bag, right? I kind of, that's how I phrase it. Like identify what you're carrying in your bag, what you're carrying into childbirth with, get rid of the ones that aren't serving you anymore. Get rid of those stories, give them back to the owner of those stories. And even if it's your own story, you know, give it back, like let that be the you in the past that had that story and let your new self move forward in your life with a new birth story. And then gather good stories, positive stories, encouraging stories. And that's why I share birth stories all the time on my Instagram account, Pain Free Birth, because women, I know for me how powerful it was to read those birth stories. I remember how much I was looking for them 10 years ago. And there were like none. I had to search them out just to find a story that was like positive or pain-free. Like this has to be possible. Show me, like I had it in my heart to seek it out. And if you have that in your heart, you will find them. And now they're everywhere. Like I get them every day. And so I share that for that exact purpose to encourage and edify uh, women who are pregnant because I know the chatter is so loud. I know the fear is so strong. But when you can tune that out 
and decide this is where I'm going and have the focus, then the stories you need will come to you. The information you need will come to you. The, your body is going to speak to you, your spirit's going to speak to you and tell you, this is what you need to do. This is the provider that's best for you. This is the, the place you should birth. Like the intuition happens. And even if something's going wrong, like we always think, what if something goes wrong? Hey, your body knows too. Like I've heard women say, oh, I just knew something wasn't right, even though the test said it was good, the doctor said it was good. And I was like, no, nope. and, and they persisted. And sure enough, like there was some issue with, with the pregnancy that their intuition, their body knew before anything else. So I just think trusting that and, and getting real with those fears, dismissing the ones that don't serve you and, and being intentional about absorbing and taking in information, specifically information that builds you up, that it, that, that validates your innate ability to birth because you can be so overprepared that you just become inflexible and rigid and that doesn't serve you that actually will manifest in your in your body and labor your body will become rigid and flexible and if you're trying to control it and then baby gets stuck I see it all the time but if we're open if we're receiving if we're open to receive you know the positive things of, and the and the empowering information about birth it shifts the whole game and you get to decide what are you going to let in your spirit and what are you not? So I think taking that power back and ownership and getting real and, and being intentional about what are we creating? What kind of story am I writing? What kind of birth am I creating? What kind of environment, how can I meditate on the environment I want for my birth? Right? Like how can I be intentional about that instead of avoiding it? Like some women are like, no, I can't, I know I don't want to think about it. I'm like, well, <laughs> you are thinking about it. It's just a fearful version, <laughs> right? So really looking at how am I imagining my birth? Like there's so many um, places we could go with that. But I would say to start off, if you're a first time mom, really looking at what are these fears? Where are the areas that I've been told a, a, a story that might not be my story? And you have permission right now to throw that story away. You don't have to carry that into your birth. That was a mic drop. Thank you so much for that. And I, I love that you brought it back to intentionality and also like you get to decide what comes into your spirit. You get to decide what you hold on to and what you essentially let go of it no longer serves you. And I love that so much because I did that even with Arlie, my you know, doula said to me, just write down all your fears, whatever came up with Amelia, whatever you're really, you know, working through right now, coming yeah. from the C-section into a V-back, like write it all down. And I did. And then I like, you know, threw it in my uh, toilet and flushed it, you know, and it was like, <laughs> goodbye, you know, yes. and it very much like this no longer serves me. And these are my fears. And so I, you know, very much resonate with that. And I just love how you speak to so much of the spirit being intentional and really like honing in on our power and just knowing like, it's our choice at the end of the day, how much we choose to either build ourselves up in this or fall into, like you said, that fear and allow yourself to spin out. So Karen, thank you so much for this conversation. It was so empowering. And just like, especially for me being in third trimester, like lit me <laughs> up. Like I'm like, yes, okay, let's do this. Um, it was just so cool and so amazing. I love what you're doing for women. Your course is incredible. Again, guys, I'm going to put the, in the show notes, uh, the link to her course as well, of course, all of her so socials, but tell us Karen, you know, where we can find you and everything just so they can hear it. Yeah, um, on Instagram, it's pain-free birth and uh, website is the same. It's all painfreebirth.com. So you can find me on there and Allie's got a code for you guys to get a discount on it if you want. <laughs> yes. Awesome. And guys, I highly, if you are pregnant right now or thinking about getting pregnant or whatever, maybe like I highly recommend you at least go and follow Karen, figure out what she's all about. And if it aligns with you and your spirit calls you, get her course. Cause I'm telling you, it is a game changer. So, and I'm, <laughs> and I'm looking forward to sharing my testimonial once I, uh, Oh, I can't wait to hear me. it. <laughs> so Karen, we need to cut and do another show. And, and yeah, exactly. We'll have to do, we'll have to do a follow-up after baby. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Back back out and we'll gush about your story. I yes. love, actually love like reverse engineering birth stories, good or bad. It's so cool to see like what's really going on in the physiology. Yeah that we yeah. don't realize at the time we're in that moment. So, right. Anyway. <laughs> no, I love that. Totally. I'm, I'm totally game. Well, thank you so much for being here. And also just like seriously being such an 
powering light in the space. Anyone that even, you know, anyone that's been listening or watching, I hope this truly helped awaken something in you or activated something in you to just know how much you can listen to your spirit, how much you are guided as Karen spoke to, especially if you are bringing life into this world right now, you are connected to that soul so much more than the world loves to give us credit for. And so just Mm -hmm. tap into that, harness your power and don't give your power away. Karen, thank you so much for being here, everyone. Love, light, and blessings. Thank you. Talk to you guys soon. Thank you, Allie. Thank you. Bye.